Hi students, um, here this afternoon, this morning, this evening, whatever time you are logging in to watch this video, I am here today with a short explanation about the modal verbs, especially the most common um, that we use the most often in our reading, writing, speaking, listening of English language. Um, I'm going to start with a short explanation of what do I mean when I say the word modal verb, and then a short explanation of the five most common modals and how their meaning is different from each other. Um, so let's jump right in. Today, our, our topic, this idea of what is a modal, we will be talking a little bit about how is it different from the word auxiliary or the phrase helping verb. And my small note here for you of don't cry, it will be okay. Um, we are in this together. We are in the same boat right now for this difficult piece of grammar. Um, so I want you to think about the, the idea of an umbrella and think about this umbrella as all of the auxiliary verbs, all of the helping verbs, um, and modal verbs are one type of auxiliary verb. They are one piece under this big umbrella of helping verb or auxiliary verb. Another way to think about this umbrella idea, if you think about like English, English language, and then under the umbrella of English language, there is British English, American English, Irish English, Canadian English, and more and more and more. This umbrella of auxiliary verbs, of helping verbs, under this umbrella, we find the modal verbs. So modal verbs are a type of auxiliary verb, a type of helping verb. Um, a little bit more explanation to, to try to make this very clear for you. Sometimes in English we say crystal clear, to be crystal clear. Um, crystal is an expensive type of glass. Sometimes a beautiful cup will be made of crystal. I want to be crystal clear. Um, a modal verb will usually change the strength of the verb, and I will give some more explanation about that in, in about one minute. A modal verb always needs another verb. It cannot stand alone. The auxiliary verb or the helping verb more commonly is changing the time or changing the tense, changing the person. Auxiliary and helping can often be a main verb alone. Let me dig into these explanations a little deeper. So think about the verb to be. Here we see I am going. Here the am, the verb be, is connected to the ing to change the time to show present continuous. You could change this and say he is going to change the person. Um, and a main verb alone, I am happy. Am is the only verb in this sentence. This is the main verb. And this can be the helping verb. We see the same thing with do. I didn't travel. Travel is the main verb. Didn't is the helping verb to show past negative. 
The second sentence here, I did my homework. Now, did is the main verb alone. We can see the same thing with have. I have gone to Minneapolis. Here, have is the helping verb together with gone to show the time, the tense. This is present perfect tense. We could change the person. We could change he has gone. And again, this can be a main verb alone. I have a new car. I have a fever. Only have is the main verb in this sentence. To think a little bit deeper about the modal, and this is our focus for the, the grammar in this video, think about the words like might, may, must, could, should, shall, and would. These are changing the strength of the verb. And they always need another verb to give the meaning. For example, we want to think about the difference between might, may, could, would, should, shall, and must. When, when we use must, this is a hundred percent. There is no choice. I must go to the store. You have no choice. This is mandatory, required, obligatory, necessary. There is no choice. If I use might, this is 50-50. I might go to the store. Half. We don't know. I should go to the store. This is a good idea. But I can choose. With must, there is no choice. I must. Have to. Need to. Required. With should, it's a good idea. But I have a choice. Might and could are very similar. However, could does not have this equal feeling of 50-50. Could has the meaning of able to. I could go to the store means I am able to go. I have a car. I have money. I have time. I am able to go. I might go has a stronger feeling about the percentage, the possibility, compared to the simple ability. I would go to the store. When I hear would, it has a strong feeling of want, but a small feeling of cannot. For example, right now, I would go shopping. However, the stores are closed because of the coronavirus pandemic. I would go to the store. I want to go. I desire to go. How is your brain feeling? These are very difficult to navigate, to use correctly in a sentence because they feel so much similar sometimes. Must, must is easy. And I think should is easy. Must, a hundred percent. There is no choice. Should, a good idea, but you can choose. I think these two are the easiest to understand. For example, these two sentences. She must call me back. There is no choice. A hundred percent. She should call me back. A good idea, but she can choose. He must pick you up. A hundred percent. There is no choice. He should pick you up. 
a good idea, but he can choose yes or no. Okay, when we come to our next three modals of might, could, and would, these are more difficult to understand because they have a similar feeling in some sentences. If we think about the same two sentences again, she, hmm, call me back, he, hmm, pick you up. If I put in here the word might, this is truly a feeling of 50%. We don't know, we are unsure. She might call me back. Yes, no, we don't know. He might pick you up. Yes, no, we don't know. If we change and we put in here the word could, it truly only has the meaning of ability. She could call me back means she is able to call me back. But we have no feeling about will she or won't she. He could pick you up. He has a car. He has time. He knows your location. He is able to pick you up. But again, there is no feeling of will or won't. Where with might, there is a small feeling of that 50%. When we come to would, then there is a feeling of want, desire, but also a small feeling of won't or can't. For example, she would call me back. She wants to call me back, but something is blocking her. Something is stopping her. Um, her phone is broken. Her time is too short. She would call me back, but she can't. He would pick you up, um, but something is stopping him. His car is broken. His tire is flat. He would pick you up, um, but he can't. So again, these, these five. Coming back to um, what I said earlier, how these are changing the strength of the verb. Might, ah, 50-50, unsure, must, 100%, definite, she must call you back. Could, she could call you back, she is able. She should call you back, it's a good idea. She would call you back. She wants to call you back, but maybe she can't. And then, and then I want to come back to this note I have at the bottom that it always needs another verb to give it meaning. Now, sometimes you will hear people say, I could, and the sentence is done. But this is during a conversation exchange or a sentence exchange. And there is always an assumed, an unspoken verb connected to it. For example, will you go to the store today? Ah, I should. I don't say it, but the feeling is, I should go to the store today. That verb is deleted, but it's still there in the deep meaning of the sentence. Can you help me next week? Ah, I might. Again, I might help you next week is the deep meaning of the sentence, but this surface level of the sentence, the verb is maybe gone and you just see I might, but there is another verb attached. Now, I did want to include a quick note about this phrase of may, and the word of shall. Both of these are very common in British English still. They are uncommon in American English. Instead, we are using their counterpart. We are using their pair word of might or should. The only times that we still hear these commonly in American English are these phrases on the right side. How may I help you? May I? Like, can I? Shall we? Especially shall we and a verb. Shall we go? Shall we start?
Um, we didn't talk in this video about how to make the negatives. Of course, each of these might, would, could, should, must, each of these has a negative form. And what we are talking about in this video is separate from the idea of politeness in a question. For example, can you help? More polite, could you help? More polite, would you help? This is completely separate from the meanings that we have been talking about in this video. All right, students, how are you feeling? Can you, can you feel the difference in your English heart between these different modals? Absolutely leave me some sentences in the comments below. I would be very happy to correct your sentences and give you some feedback about how you are using these modals in your sentences. Until next time, students. Bye.